Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today, holy cow, we have an amazing review. An amazing review. This is a Sharp by Design Mini Tempest. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that knife, guys. Look at it. Ah, thank you so much to Eugene Krabs, a gentleman who loaned this into the channel for letting me take a look at it. I appreciate it a lot, man. Um, because without him, I probably never would have got to uh, experience this knife, and I am so glad I had the chance to experience it. So, there we go. And I'm going to try and get this review out um, pretty quickly. I'm not sure when it will come out, but, uh, e yeah, maybe I'll push, yeah, anyways. <laughs> I've been really, really busy lately, guys. It's been, oh, it's been wild. And I've got some, <laughs> got some announcements that we'll be making on the channel in a little bit in regards to uh, certain things I'm up to, but that's not today. So, blade length, come in here just a little bit over three and a half inches. This is definitely a full-size knife, uh, but it doesn't really feel like a, uh, a large knife. And, I mean, it's not a large knife, but yeah. Okay, let's get our size comparisons out here. There's our rats. Kind of a, an in-between. Uh, the rats type of size, which a lot of knives are. Have you noticed? A lot of knives are between um, the rats in size. Um, next up, let's go ahead and grab our Civivis. The Elementum. There's the Praxis. And let's uh, compare against our PM2 and bug out. And I think those are the only size comparisons we're gonna do today. Um, I can't think of anything else to really compare this knife against. This is a knife that is in a class um, that is kind of by itself. I don't have a whole lot of knives that are in this, this same class. But what are we looking at here? Well, we have an M390 blade front flipper, uh, drop point blade, beautiful, beautiful drop point. It is a titanium frame lock with uh, really gorgeous carbon fiber inlays. Just a whole lot of goodness going on here. Let's go ahead and, uh, oh, and by the way, this edge is the edge that the, uh, that the knife came uh, to me with. So let's go ahead and uh, get to the, get to the table or not to get to the table. Well, get to the review. You guys know what I mean. We're getting to the review cutting. Gosh. All righty, guys. Who's ready to talk about a really cool knife? I sure am. Uh, there might be a little bit of wind noise today. I apologize for that. We are getting into the windy season, and I don't have a microphone with me today. But this is what I have to film. Actually just got off work. Got some time between classes. I'm going to go study. Got an exam coming up. So I have been so, so busy. And I really want to film today because tomorrow I'm shaving my beard. And I'm, uh, I know it's going to be bad. I know it's going to be bad. <laughs> but it's for a prank that me and some colleagues are pulling on a professor. And uh, I know it's like, well, just don't do it. But it was my idea and everyone really liked it. They're all on board. And so since it was my idea, I've got to, got to really get into it. We're all going to be, um, dressing up like this professor and so he has a mustache and so I'm gonna be shaving my beard keeping the mustache dressing like he would dress and showing up to class like that yeah we'll see <laughs> I know it's uh I know it's not gonna be pretty you know when I when I shave the beard and just keep the mustache I look like I shouldn't be allowed within 100 feet of an elementary school but yeah before you guys start laughing, I'm sure you'll see some videos of, of me with, uh, with the, the thing all shaven. And don't try and talk me out of it. By the time you see this video, the deed will have already been done. <laughs> but actually, if you go back to the early days of the channel, like, geez, long time ago, there was a couple of videos, just a few where I wasn't showing my face as much as I do nowadays, where, uh, yeah, I got rid of the beard and just had the mustache. And I don't know why I did that. I didn't like it. My girlfriend at the time didn't like it. I knew it would be bad. So I don't know why the hell I did it, but I did. Anyways. <laughs> okay, let's get started. I'm I'm just in, in pre-morning for, for, for my beard. 
I apologize to all of you in advance when we when you guys have to see that. But the knife we're talking about today is a Sharp by Design Mini Tempest. And I want to look good for this knife, right? In fact, I should have dressed up. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit dressed up today, but I should have dressed up more. This is a this is a special knife, guys. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh. Okay, let's start with the action. This is one of the best actions I've ever felt. It might be the best. It's definitely the best front flipper I've ever felt. Man, that is just... Oh, that is so snappy and just delicious. You can have a reverse flick as well. I mean, look at that drop. That's perfect. The detent nub that Brian Nadeau does, it's amazing. You can thumb flick this thing. It gives this, it gives it a very unique feel, a very different feel. I'm not sure exactly how to explain it, but if you felt it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't like front flippers very much, but I love this one. This one absolutely flips. Oh, so damn good. Oh, look at that. So, so nice. All right, let's talk about the ergonomics. Very, very comfortable. This knife feels great. The jimping is excellent. Look at that. A bunch of jimping, plenty of stuff to get your thumb on. That's what I love to see. Um, the ergonomic lines are very classic. I mean, the entire knife has a kind of classic aesthetic. And I want to say right now, there's a difference between boring and classic. You know, there's a lot of knives like, um, like a lot of knives from Civivi's line. They, they all look the same, and that's boring. But classic, classic can look simple, but when you have a designer like Brian Nadeau, I mean, this is just a sexy knife. Look how he pulled this off. It is, it's got classic knife lines. It's got classic styling, but it's just sexy. There's nothing boring about this at all, at all. So yeah, ergonomics are fantastic. The scales are slightly contoured. I don't really feel the clip in my hand. The jimping's excellent. Um, yeah, I'm ready to go to town right like this. All right, let's talk about the carry. Let's go ahead and tilt it. What the frick is wrong with this thing? <laughs> what is going on with my tripod? You know what? I have to fix that. <laughs> there we go. It's just a little bit stiff. All right. Here's what the clip looks like. Very, very nice. In the pocket, fine. No issues, you can get your hand down in there. Feel around. I mean, I've got other crap in my pockets right now. <laughs> but it tucks away nicely. It's a very slim knife, you can see that. Very nice and slim. The carbon fiber is smooth. Yeah, it works fantastically. No complaints whatsoever. All right. Shall we go ahead and do a little bit of cutting? I think we shall. So, M390 blade, we have a flat grind here. This is not an original factory edge. This is an edge from the gentleman that loaned this in, which has held up really well through all the use I've done. I mean, obviously I have been testing this like I tested cold steel, but you know, it's been doing all right. <laughs> not only does it look amazing, it's got the performance to back it up, right? Oh, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. All right, let's grab our rope. Very, very nice. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of this. One, two, three. Did pretty much exactly like I was expecting it would. It went through okay, okay, but this type of knife doesn't normally crush the rope that good, so that's not anything that's surprising. All right. Whoops. All right, set that one right there. All right, so I don't have a thickness behind the edge reading. <laughs> Let's tilt this back up. 
So, so one thing I noticed, when you have a very high polished mirror edge like this, sometimes it doesn't really bite into the, uh, the pool noodle very well. It gets a little bit slippery. So there's a little bit of that going on, which has nothing to do with the geometry, right? It is a flat grind and it's not a very wide blade. So I did feel as we were going in there, it caught a little bit, maybe got hung up on the coating just a little. Um, but honestly, even with that, not bad at all. I mean, that's perfectly acceptable. I would say this knife will cut exactly the way you want it to. All right, it is, the wind is picking up. Hate the windy season. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Oh, by the way, if you guys remember, <laughs> when I was homeless, I, uh, I lived back in these mountains. I'd pitch my tent and be up there. Um, I was there for a while. Alrighty, we're back. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the first video yeah, so, so, okay. So we talked about in the video the whole prank that um, me and some friends were pulling on a professor. It was amazing. I will throw up some pictures right here. Yes, I'm currently mustachioed. You will see me with my mustache in upcoming videos if you haven't already seen me uh, in some shorts. But um, it was a fantastic prank. Uh, his face when he walked in, well, actually, he was already in the classroom, but... I walked in, and we're in the Hawaiian shirt and the sweats, kind of like he wears all the time. The mustache and everything kind of gave me a weird look. My buddy Jesse walked in dressed the same way. Gets another weird look. Um, Amber threats to start walking in, and then he's he starts laughing. He's like, okay, I know what's going on here. It was, <laughs> it was pretty good. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about this beautiful knife. And... Gosh, oh gosh, is it a beautiful knife. This thing is spectacular. Let's get into what I like. Where do I even start? Um, everything. I <laughs> like everything. Um, this is a good looking knife. This is a really, really good looking knife. This is one of the most beautiful knives I've ever seen, in my opinion. It's absolutely fantastic. Love that drop point blade, love that swedge, love how the fuller goes into the swedge. I love the way that these uh, that this um, insert is over the lock bar here. That looks really, really nice to me. The inserts themselves are flush, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I like how they did the relief cuts for the lock bar. It just looks amazing. This carbon fiber is really, really beautiful. I talk to people all the time who are like, oh yeah, I'm over carbon fiber, you know, I'm, I'm done with it. I don't know. Maybe I haven't had enough carbon fiber yet. I'm not burned out on carbon fiber, but this is some of the best carbon fiber I've ever seen. Uh, it's nothing special, like it's not fat carbon or anything, but man, the weave just looks absolutely phenomenal. And then, in fact, this whole thing, the blacked out version, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I I've said this before on the channel, I'll say it again. I think the most boring knives are, um, where did I, do I have, yeah, here's an example. I think the most boring color scheme for a knife is black handles with a, you know, satin or stone wash blade. I love this knife, but that is kind of the most boring aesthetic to me. All blacked out looks really, really good to me. And this is actually one of the best <laughs> all blacked out knives uh, I've ever seen. Really love it. All the hardware is blacked out. Really, really nice. Next thing, let's talk about the ergonomics. This thing is so comfortable. So comfortable. The scales are slightly contoured. Ever so slightly. It's a narrow knife. I mean, it's not super tall. It's not super thick. But it just feels so good in the hand. The jimping up here is perfect. Perfect jimping. It goes out far enough. It's got good texture. I love seeing that. This is the type of jimping that you want on a working knife. And this is more of a, more of a classy type of knife, but man, they nailed the jimping. You can choke up here if you need to. Um, but yeah, just fantastic ergonomics. The clip does not bother me in the hand. I can feel it. I know it's there, but it's it's not a hot spot. It doesn't really bother me that much. Let's go ahead and talk about the fit and finish. Basically flawless. Basically flawless. See the centering there. 
I love this backspacer. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not even a backspacer. It's parts of the scales are just milled out. You can see the seam there, but it looks really nice to me. I think the pocket clip looks great. All of the inlays, I mean, there is no lipping. It's, th it's perfectly done. Perfectly done. The titanium is rounded over everywhere. It's just, this feels so premium. And yes, this is an expensive knife, right? These went for like $350 plus, but it feels even more expensive than that. It's, it's just phenomenal. Feels amazing. Fantastic, fantastic knife. Um, where do I even go next? The action. Let's talk about the action. <laughs> this is the best front flipper I've ever handled. Oh, look at that action. You can flick it out of the fuller. That Brian Nadeau detent nub. This is my first experience with it, and now I understand why everyone loves it. This detent breaks with a crisp crispness that I just can't describe. And I, uh, it, it's something I've never experienced before. Um, if you felt the, the, <laughs> the detent nub, you know how good it is, right? You know how good it is. You know why it's so amazing. If you haven't felt it yet, there's no describing it to you. You'll just have to get your hands on it yourself. I've talked before, I, I, I don't love front flippers. If I'm going to carry a front flipper, I prefer that it has another means of deployment because in use, I just don't tend to, you know, I just tend to gravitate towards a flipper tab or a thumb stud, thumb hole, something like that. Um, and I like flipper uh, front flippers for like fidgeting. If I'm just sitting around fidgeting, I think they're fine. But for actual use, uh, I don't find a front flipper to be the most convenient opening method. However, this one here... Gosh dang. And yeah, you know, I could pull it out and, you know, reverse flick it, but I didn't. I front flipped it pretty much every time I carried it. And I mean, I wasn't carrying this like a work knife, right? I mean, it's not my knife for one. And number two, it, you know, it's a gorgeous knife. But I carried this to like special occasions, carried this to, like dinners, carried this to a funeral, actually. Um, carried this to church a couple of times. And, um, you know just cutting small things and you pull it out when you need to cut something you pull this knife out and you do that you just feel better than everyone else <laughs> it's, it's a horrible thing to say but dang it it's true it's absolutely true this knife has this knife ha it, it just it is a it is a quality I have not really ever felt, and it's made by Riot. I've handled Riot made knives; they're all really, really good. But Brian Nadeau's design just took this over the top. I really, really believe that, and it just gosh, love the six shooter pivot. Does have regular tooling. The pocket clip works fine. I don't know; it's just good. The blade. Let's talk about the blade. Yeah, good blade, right? M390. Um, it does cut well. Uh, during the cutting footage, it didn't do as good as I was expecting. That might be because uh, the these polished edges don't really uh, like bite into the pool noodles that well. That doesn't mean that the edge doesn't have any bite. I mean, it does, but sometimes super high polished edges tend to slide on the pool noodle. But like in the use that I was getting out of it, it was fine. I mean, it's not a super thick blade. If you're gonna be using this, it'll be fine, right? It'll be absolutely fine. I wouldn't say this is the sliciest thing ever, but I don't really think it's trying to be, nor does it need to. So yeah, there we go. Access to the lock bar. I thought this would be bad because it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of access, but you can see they have kind of the um, lock bar insert pokes up a little bit and you get it and you just, you get that lock bar so good. And the disengagement feels amazing. I don't know how to explain it, but the disengagement just feels satisfying. And look at that close. Look at that close. Holy crap. That's just, that's just wonderful. I have decided I am going to own a Brian Nadeau of some kind, a Sharp by Design of some kind, 
This knife has... I, I've always liked the look of his stuff, but after, after handling this knife, I'm in love. I'm head over heels. Guys, it's... Yeah... I will own some of his stuff. His designs just, they look great, but they translate so well to the final product. It's, he's definitely in my top five design, favorite designers. I'm just super, super glad I got to handle this thing. Um, geez, is there anything else to talk about? Let's go on to the negatives. None. <laughs> Look, I'm sure that another reviewer could maybe find a couple of things wrong with this knife. I don't know. Maybe um, people that have handled more knives of this class or higher could find a couple things to nitpick. But for me, this is one of the few knives that I've ever handled that I genuinely think is 100% perfect. I don't say that very often. Um, you know, even with knives that I really, really like, there's always a couple of nitpicks and stuff. And there's things that, um, like there are actually some things that I don't really mention in reviews. If I'm reviewing a knife, there are like tiny things that like might get under my skin a little bit, but it's not enough of an issue for me to, you know, bring it up. Um, like something I rarely talk about in my reviews is uh, like the color schemes of different knives. Um, I've reviewed a, a bunch of knives where I absolutely hated like the, the combination of scale color that they did to blade finish or whatever. But I don't mention that type of stuff because unless it's just absolutely horrendous, unless it's absolutely horrendous, I don't mention that type of stuff because even though it's not my cup of tea, it probably is someone else's, right? But Even on uh, on knives that I love a lot, there, there's always at least one or two things I can nitpick. This knife here, I can't really find anything to nitpick at all. And so I'm not even going to try, right? I'm not going to try. I'm just going to leave this review the way it is. This knife is amazing. I'm so glad I got to handle it. Thank you again to Mr. Eugene Krabs. I really appreciate you loaning me this knife. I That's fantastic. And um, yeah. I guess that's it. Guys, I'm not sure if you expected anything else from this review, but uh, it's a darn good knife. So that's gonna be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon. Hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, adios. Mm -hmm.